Hey, hi everybody. How are you? Welcome to uh, January 2nd. Oh my goodness. Yes. So, sorry I couldn't be live with you tonight, but I'm on a train most likely heading home. And so I pre-recorded this and um, I hope you enjoy it. It is a book that is this year's or this last year's Caldecott winner. And um, that means it was chosen by a committee of educators and scholars and authors and that and publishers to be um, the best illustrated children's book of the year. This particular book is called We Are Water Protectors. And it is by Carol Lindstrom. And it's illustrated by Michaela Goad. And I'm just going to read you a little bit about both of them. Um, Carol Lindstrom is Anishinaabe, I apologize for this mispronouncing, Metis, and is tribally enrolled with the Turtle Mountain Band of the Ojibwe. Ojibwa. I apologize. She was born and raised in Nebraska and currently makes her home in Maryland. A fierce water protector herself, Carol writes about the connection between her culture and the land speaking up for all the voices that cannot speak for themselves. The illustrator, Michaela Goad, is of the Tlingit descent and is tribally enrolled in the Central Council of the Tlingit and Haida Indian tribes of Alaska. She grew up in the rain forests and on the beaches of Juneau, Alaska, where she still lives today. She's an award-winning designer and illustrator and has illustrated a number of picture books, including... Salmon Boy, winner of the 2018 American Indian Youth Literature Best Picture Book Award. So this is a very cool book. I think you're going to love the illustrations and just the whole story. So um, thanks for coming to story time and art with me tonight. Just hope, listen to the story. And it's not a long one. So this won't be a long session, but the artwork is beautiful. So I'm excited to share it with you. And here we have, we are water protectors. in there you can see. Water is the first medicine, Nokomis told me. We come from water. It's nourished us inside our mother's body as it nourishes us here on Mother Earth. Water is sacred, she said. We stand with our songs and our dreams. We are still here. The river's rhythm runs through my veins, runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that will destroy the land. Spoil the water, poison plants and animals, wreck everything in its path. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it wouldn't come for many, many years. Now the black snake is here. Its venom burns the land, courses through the water, makes it unfit to drink. Take courage. I must keep the black snake away from my village's water. I must rally my people together to stand for the water, to stand for the land, to stand as one against the black snake. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. 
It will not be easy. We fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. The winged ones, the crawling ones, the four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes. The earth. We are all related. Tears like waterfalls stream down, tracks down my face, tracks down my people's faces. Water has its own spirit, Nokomis told me. Water is alive. Water remembers our ancestors who came before us, she said. We stand with our songs and our dreams. We are still here. We are stewards of the earth. Our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors. We stand. The black snake is in for the fight of its life. And that's the end of that story. It says, in the Ojibwa culture, women are the protectors of the water and men are the protectors of the fire. Perhaps it is for that reason that I felt compelled to speak for the water through this story. Humans have been mistreating Mother Earth for millennia and the indigenous peoples have long acted as stewards of the planet, giving a voice to our silent home. This goes on to tell a little more of the current historical things that are happening and what they have gone, including the Dakota Access Pipeline and what the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe did. Um, there's a glossary here that if I'd looked earlier, Anishinaabe, Anishinaabe, the people, it refers to the three tribes of the council fires of the Ojibwe the Potawatomi, and the Odawa. I'm saying that terribly, I know. It has some really good um, ways to pronounce them, though. Anyway, it's actually, it's a very beautiful book, and it has a pledge. I know a lot of kids have seen this and loved it. It's, I will do my best to honor Mother Earth and all its living beings, including the water and the land. I will always remember to treat the earth as I would like to be treated. I will treat the winged ones, the crawling ones, the four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes, the earth with kindness and respect. I pledge to make this world a better place by being a steward of the earth and a protector of the water. Oh, I love this book. It's so beautiful. The illustrations, the colors, the story itself, the way it's told and, and in the contrast. It's amazing. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And that's why I chose it for tonight's book to share. It is a new year, new things to think about. I live in the Pacific Northwest where we are surrounded by water everywhere. And it's just appalling sometimes to go out and see the pollution and what's happening in the oceans and the rivers. So you do what you can, you pick up what you can, you take, carry it out, you keep it clean as much as you can. And you do what you can to uh, protect. Anyway, that's me. That's the photographer in me. That's just the naturalist in me that loves all this. So that's the story for tonight. We are water protectors. It's an absolutely beautiful book written by Carol Lindstrom. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you Share this with a friend who you think might like it. 
So until the next time, keep looking for the beauty hidden in plain sight. You know it's there all around you, but the first place to look is in your mirror. I'll see you soon.